All right. <clears throat> hmm. Great. All right. I got my notification. That's what I wanted. All right. All right. All right. All right. Hey, what's up, Khalil? How you feeling? Bless you, Sister Williams. So nice to see you. Y'all come on, log in, like and share. Let's expose this word to the world. What's up, Wayne? How you feeling, man? Hope all is well with you. Bless you, Aunt Cheryl. How are you doing? So nice to see you. Bless you, sexy. All right, all right, all right, all right. What's up, cuz? How you feeling, man? Always good. Good to see you on. All right, let's pray and get into this. Father, thank you for this night. Thank you for your people that are gathered on this network, that we may bless your name, that we may grow and flourish in you. You're the true and living God. There's no other God like you in none of the earth. So have your way in us and through us. We'll give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's good, Gwen. Nice to hear. Nice to hear. Listen, I wanted to talk to you tonight. Last week, we talked about the Holy Spirit and killed some, a lot of the myths and different things. What's up, Pop? Mama, how y'all feeling? Nice to see y'all on. Uh, the myth about the Holy Spirit. The job of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and, and the reason is because we don't want people to lose out on God's best because they're so myth of who the Holy Spirit is and his job and what he's to do in your life. What's up, brother law? How you feeling, man? Y'all get that thing straight down in Georgia, man. We closing that gap. Y'all, you need to go out there and, and make sure they get them counts right, man. Use your political influence. <laughs> Bless you, Bishop Ham. Um, but the Holy Spirit has been watered down and people have been um, doing things and expressing themselves in a way that is not becoming of the Holy Spirit. And because it's not the Holy Spirit, a lot of times people are expecting God to do things in their life and it doesn't happen and it breeds frustration. And the reason for that is um, they're doing things all wrong. And when you're doing things wrong, you cannot expect a God to override the rules and his statutes to be a blessing to you. Just because you don't like where you at, just because the struggle is intense, um, God can't change the Bible for you. Now, and a lot of times what we have is most people will have the real Holy Ghost living on the inside of them, but because they are not jumping and shouting and rolling around the church. Not, I mean, everybody has a right to praise God the way they want, but everybody needs to know the truth. That's not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has nothing to do with people running around the church, dancing, the organ going, the drums going. That's not the Holy Spirit at all. Bless you, Sister Melissa. It's so nice to see you on. When we understand the job of the Holy Spirit, and then we start understanding his job in our life, we cannot expect the Holy Spirit to be what he's not just because everybody else is doing it. God don't go along with the fad. God doesn't go along with, you know, everybody's doing it, so I'll do it. That's not God, all right? So it's so important that we understand that. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, and it directs you, and, and it, it dictates your moves, uh, that you can live the best life God has for you. It is not an emotionalizer. He is not an emotionalizer. He is not something to make you run, jump, and shout. If you want to do that, that's fine. You can praise God like that. There's no problem with that. But don't lie and say the Holy Spirit made me do these things because he does not. So in talking about the Holy Spirit, one of the things... Um, we understood when we left off last week is just a little continuation is the Holy Spirit is it helps you to fulfill the plan of God for your life. 
So whatever your destiny is in your marriage and the upbringing of your children, your grandchildren, your, your business, whatever it may be, whatever, the Holy Spirit will help you. All right. Now, here's something that I need to, to, to get in your spirit. Make room in your plans for the Holy Spirit. Whatever you're planning, whatever you're looking to do, whatever you're looking to seize, wherever you're looking to grow, wherever, you're, wherever your church you're going to join, whatever is going on in your life, make room for the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he's your helper. He's your guide. He, he's not part of, you know, when you have the real Holy Spirit, man, that thing speak on the inside of you and you can't rest until you comply. Well, some people already have their agenda set. Some people already come to God with an agenda and they look for God to endorse it. They said, let's say, and I'm going to praise you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to come to church. And this here, what I want from you. All right. I'm going to retire. I'm going to move to Florida. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And, and I just need you to sign off right there. And God said, no, no, yeah, I'm Lord. So you, you come to me as if you don't know what to do until I speak. And the Holy Spirit is the one that gets you to calm down that you won't be anxious and miss God. All right. That's so important. I can't get so anxious that I miss God. I can't get so anxious that I don't want to hear what God wants me to do. Oh, excuse me. So make make room in your plans for the Holy Spirit. Now, when I say make room, what is what is exactly is that making room? Making room is I'm not so locked in to my goals that I set that I will ignore what God is trying to tell me through the Holy Spirit. I got to make room. Let me pause. Let me break. You know, I was looking to uh, to buy another uh, truck, another work truck. And uh, the guy was, um, it, it was a, a great deal. And um, and I, the guy wanted $52,000 cash. And I was like, okay, that's a good deal. And I was sitting there and I was just praying. And I was saying, well, I'm going to buy the truck. And I would just park it. In case one of my trucks break down, something major happen, then I will uh, buy that truck. And uh, just, you know, because it, now that seemed like it sounded like a good idea, makes good sense. But I was just spending time with God, time in the presence of God and the Holy Spirit and wisdom begin to speak, navigate me, order my steps, especially when it comes to my business. And um, if you got the money in the bank, you don't need the truck parked outside. So if one of my trucks go down today, I have I have the ability to buy another truck tomorrow. So I don't need to take my money out, out, of, out, of, the, out of my pocket, buy this truck, and then uh, have it in case of emergency. If one of my trucks, we have one truck that's that's fairly old and, uh, you know, it got almost 500,000 miles on it. And, um, man, I'm sitting there, I'm saying, oh, this truck, you know, I don't want it to, you know, surprise me and break down, blah, blah, blah. Well, if, if you prepare it, you don't need to give up your money. Now, some of y'all say, well, I knew that. I didn't because I was, I was getting ready to go buy the truck. I was getting ready to go buy the truck in case that truck break down. <clears throat> I don't need to do that if I have the ability to buy a truck tomorrow. I don't need to sit in the booth. I don't need to wait for no bank to call me back. I, ain't, I don't need to talk about nothing. <laughs> well, there are things in your life you'll make decisions. And if you don't make room for the Holy Spirit... You may get what you want, but it may not be the best deal, the best plan, the best outlet, the best way to get it done. So that's why we need the Holy Spirit. He helps us to succeed. All right. Now, don't take my testimony and think, oh, you know, he, he's trying. My, the level I'm on in life may be different than yours. So if we're talking about the blessings of the Lord, you know, if if I'm up here and you down here, don't don't think somebody is trying to impress you. You you know what? You just got to get your come up. Come on, because I ain't never coming down. You got to get your come up. Don't don't act stupid. Don't talk stupid. It's not about the things or stuff. It's just about wherever, whatever level you on, you got to let the Holy Spirit work in your life. All right? There's a Here's a question you have to ask yourself if you're really going to grow in God. All right? If you're going to grow in God, this is something that you you have to ask yourself. Is the next, my next level, my next goal, my next plan in my life, has it been ordered by God or is this something I came up with? Now, everybody <clears throat> wants to do better. 
Everybody wants more money. Everybody wants, you know, whatever, house, car, marriage, dog. I don't know. Everybody wants something. But what if is what you desire, <clears throat> does it have anything to do with God? Because a lot of, a lot of Christians get frustrated because they can't get God to endorse the plan they made without acknowledging him. So I don't care where you are right now. If you say, well, you know, I, I wanted to move over here and I did. I wanted to get this job and I did. Well, some people are going to look at you and say, man, you know, you're a real success, man. Everything you set out to do, you got it done. Well, what you have to understand now is when you belong to God, just because you are uh, successful in the eyes of man, excuse me, it does not mean God going to pat you in the back. D listen, the Bible said you're going to come to him saying, Lord, Lord, he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. The only people I'm hanging with, the only people I'm getting down with is those that know my father's will and will do my father's will. You reaching your goals don't mean your success with God. And this is why we got to get money under control. That's why we got to get materialism under control because we'll keep thinking as long as I got stuff, I can always put that up and say, look what the Lord has done in my life. And God is saying, no, no, no. everybody with a car don't mean I gave it to him. Everybody with a house don't mean I gave it to him. All right. So it's so important that you understand that if I'm going to grow, I need to make sure my plans line up with God's plan for my life. It can't just be my idea. If you have, if you've set goals <clears throat> in your life, now I'm not, this is not for everybody. This is for the children of God. This is for those that want to advance way beyond materialism, way beyond houses and cars, way beyond money. Now, when the, I said this many a time, when, when the Bible said wisdom is more valuable, more precious than silver and gold. Well, it's not like you can have a jar of wisdom and buy five houses and, and you can't buy one. That's not what it's talking about. What wisdom give you, money can't produce. And what wisdom give you will satisfy you, will quench your thirst, will quench your anxiety far greater than money. Broke people always think it's just money, money, money. Give me the money and I'm telling you my life going to change. If I give you money, you're not going to do nothing but uh, make your life just as miserable. You know, I was sitting, I was talking to a friend of mine. He's doing very well. Uh, both of us are in real estate. He has houses down in, in North Carolina. I got a couple of TPs up here. And uh, and and we were talking and I said, well, you know, you know, doc, you know, I'm a registered Democrat. I'm not trying to sway you one way or another. I'm just talking about myself. <laughs> I'm a registered Democrat, but Democrats keep throwing money at poor people as if that's going to help them. And I said, don't. It don't. I said, and then they got so many programs that people, now if, if this hits you, it hits you. <clears throat> don't, don't get all crazy. They have so many programs where people will go from one program to the next program to the next program, and taxpayers is paying housing for people for years, years. And they have no intent of improving their life. They have no intent of getting a job. They have no intent. You know, you know, y'all heard me say this. They talking about, oh, you know, they, they cutting programs in my neighborhood. They cutting programs. The after school program is cut. All this other stuff. Well, you can't blame Trump or any Republican, anybody, anything like that. All right. If you're going, hey, Sister Bowles, how you doing? If you're going to, if you're going to grow in advance. You can't be dependent on the system and then get upset when you're getting all the money. You're getting housing, you're getting Medicare, Medicaid, whatever you're getting. You're getting food stamps, you're getting all this stuff. And then when they say, you know what, we're giving too much money to this zip code and we're not getting any, any, any benefits to our community. I'm a firm believer that if you're receiving federal funds, if you're receiving state funds for housing, for food, for spending, you need to be working toward being a contributor, a positive contributor to that community. Now, I know most people don't like that. It's all right. It's all right. I wasn't here for you to like me. All right. But you have to get to the place to understand that if I'm going to have a good life, I got to now have the Holy Spirit. Why? The Holy Spirit will make me responsible for what I need to change so that I can grow. You, you can't tell me you got the Holy Spirit 
and yet your life is a failure. You can't tell me you got the Holy Spirit and you are not growing and advancing. When you have the Holy Spirit, the greater one, the hope of glory living in on the inside of you, he always calls you to make moves that will cause you to advance. Are you listening to me? All right. So the next plan, next goal, it has to be God incorporated. Now here's something that's powerful. The moment you lock into your destiny, your purpose in life, your history, what you was, what you did become irrelevant. Do you hear me? When you lock into your new plan, your new your destiny that God has set for you, the plan that God has set for you, it don't matter how long you was in jail. It don't matter how many times you've been to jail. It don't matter how many babies you had. It don't matter, you know, all that, none of that. Matter. When you start moving toward the place God has called you, your history, your past, become irrelevant, there's absolutely no chain the devil can use to hold you back. When you are where God wants you, you it automatically comes with God's protection. All right? And that's so important because some of us don't, you know, some people, well, I've never been to jail. Well, some people that may not have been to jail, but they have other things in their past that keeps hindering them. Broken relationships. And it, and it messes up new relationships. You know, you had a man that, you know, Andre dogged you, Billy dogged you, John Boy dogged you. Then all of a sudden you meet Larry. Larry's a good man, but because you've been dogged by the other three, Larry got to pay the price for what the other three did. The other three gone. Now you got a good man and he's paying the price for all the other men that done dogged you. Well, those chains got to be broken. The moment you allow God to begin to navigate your life, no matter what has happened in your past, it will never be a chain the devil can use to hold you down, to hold you back. Do you hear me? All right. When, when God get in your life, he's looking to advance. He's looking for you to grow. You got to believe in yourself that I am born to be great. Not born to be on welfare. When you're on welfare, you're controlled. You don't decide where you're going to live when you got section eight. They tell you where you're going to live. They're going to approve it. They're going to they're gonna say yay or nay. That's not, God called you to be the head. If, if you're going to be the head, you cannot be comfortable receiving government assistance as a lifestyle. I didn't say receiving it, period, but as a lifestyle. If you're going to get on welfare, you use welfare. You use welfare to advance, to advance your life, to better your life. I, you know, let me tell you something. People may not like when I when I say this. When I was in Brooklyn, Giuliani was the mayor. He had he got out uh, Dixon, I think, or Nixon or whatever that the man named David Dixon or Nixon, whatever the mayor name was at the time. Giuliani came in. Giuliani said, "Everybody that's on welfare, they were gonna give them an orange jumpsuit. They gonna clean the streets. We ain't gotta hire no more state workers. If you receiving state funds, you ought to be working for the state." I said, "That's a good idea." That's a good idea because if you keep putting people in a place where they don't have to take any responsibility for the betterment of their life, you know, they will live like that and they'll tell you thank you. In all reality, you're helping to make their life work worse. Dinkins, that, yeah, that's it. Dinkins, Dinkins, David Dinkins. Thanks, God. So, so you got to understand Sometimes when people make you responsible, it don't mean they're against you. When people start saying you're gonna have to, you want, you want welfare, you're gonna have to go into a trade school, you're going to school, and every six months we need to know that you're doing well. Cause ain't, it ain't no no state, no city, no county got no business paying for childcare for you to lollygag around. You need to be improving your life. If the state is paying for your child to receive child care, what are you doing? Go your butt and make something of yourself. The Holy Spirit pushes you that you will not allow the devil to have chains on your life. Because as you live a certain lifestyle so long, that become a chain. You can't advance. You can't grow. And when that devil get a chain on your life, man, it seems like you so comfortable you know what your goal will be? Have more than my neighbor. Have more than my neighbor. Most people have no idea how much potential is on the inside of them. Because one, 
They are jealous and envious of people that have more than them. They feel intimidated by socializing with people that have more than them. They have no, no, no idea how great they could be. You know, I tell people this. How you get your money doesn't determine your level of success. What you do with the money you make, whether you're a garbage collector, whether you work at McDonald's, whether you're a CEO, what you do with that money will determine your level of success. You don't have to have a job that's paying you full $500,000 a year for you to live a good life. What you need to have is an idea what I need to be doing with hey, my what's money. Up, Are you feeling blessed, your sister? Oh, man, what is going on here? My thing yeah. is acting up. So, so you got to know if I'm going to advance, then I got to get to a place that I'm not going to allow what I, what I was to hold me back. My thinking, I got to have my mind renewed. Now, when your mind is renewed, it's not that your mind is just thinking like the Bible. You have to think how when God originally made me, what was his intent? What was his intention when God created me? He wanted me to have dominion. He wanted me to grow. He wanted me to excel. He didn't want nothing the devil had to offer to, to take me or derail me and stop me. No, no, no. So I got to renew my mind. I got to think new. You're, you're not supposed to be the receptionist. You were supposed to be in the back, the office in the corner. But when you grow up a certain way, you're so happy you got a nice car, you never reach your full potential. Because you're the only one in the family with a nice car, you think you've arrived. You won't reach your full potential. If you're going to reach your full potential, you've got to understand where God want me. The promise that God made you if you got a word from the Lord, <clears throat> a prophetic word, if you believe God has called you to a certain, the promise can only be received when you're in the place God has called you to. So if I made my destiny, my plan, and my goal without God, I could be somewhere expecting God to show up, and he never will because he can't promise me something, and I'm off doing my own thing and tell him, hey, God, catch, catch me because I'm on the move. You got to catch up with me. God said, no, 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 no. No, you got you to gotta sit at my feet to get my best. Now, I'm going to say something. I hope you can get this, all right? A lot of people cannot receive their healing. They can't receive their financial blessings because they're not in the place God wants them to be. You don't, listen to me now, I'm not telling you not to go to school, but you don't, you don't advance because you got a degree. Not in the kingdom of God. You advance because you, you're obedient. Growing in God, you cannot try to implement the world's definition of success to try to get God to move on your behalf. Well, God, I got this degree. Now, you should have a degree, whatever. You, you want to work in a specific field. You know what requirements are needed. Got to meet those requirements. Or you just like the field you, you're working in and you want to advance. You want to know what's going on in that field. That's wonderful. But you can't follow the world's dictatorship and then throw it to God and say, now nah, you knew you hooked me up. No, man, no. Don't work like that. Order my steps in your word, Lord. What do you want from me? Because before I spend four years in college, when I sh made, should have been four years in a trade school, could make the difference on whether I'm going to live as a millionaire and be a blessing to others or whether or not I'm going to live my life at just having more than average, more than what I grew up with, more than what my mama had, more than what my siblings have. My wife and I were talking, and uh, I told my wife, I said, you know, I really believe our next level is always helping someone else. Now, hear me what I'm about to say. Helping someone else that really don't even deserve it. We're just being God in the earth. They messed up. They've done things. They should not even get a second chance, but because God favored them. Now, why does God favor them? I don't know because I look at their life and I say, this is, this is, it's a mess. This is a mess. And, uh, and, and, but God needs me to say, no, I need you to help them. I need you to do this. I need you to give them another chance. I need you to do this. whatever it may be. And, and, and here's what you don't understand. When God is moving like that through you, 
There, there is no limit. Now, here, what you, it don't matter whether you are the janitor at McDonald's or whether you are, are an executive at Apple. When God starts moving through you to be a blessing to other people, the, the, no, it's not the sky that's the limit. All right, the 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 stratosphere, the 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 next planets is is, is you go you surpass that. There are no limits when you allow God to use you to be God in somebody else's life. Listen, I'm going to say this last point. When you hear God, harden not your heart. You know, I don't matter what it is. You know, when you have the Holy Spirit living in you, man, God speak loud through the Holy Spirit. You know, they think they all, the Bible, that Trinity is not just three separate entities, Godheads, three separate Godheads, but they would never, ever contradict each other. They think the same way. So when, when I say the Holy Spirit talking, it's essence, the voice, the heart, the mindset of God towards you. Well, when God is moving you, the Holy Spirit is nudging you, harden not your heart. Listen, you can feel nuts, man, I need to go on a diet and lose some weight. And that devil will tell you, well, it don't make no sense to lose no weight till you lose till you lose some weight. You need to first lose weight before you start going on this exercise journey. And you sit your butt down. Harden out your heart. Don't ever buck up against what the Holy Spirit is trying to do in your life. Because that one pound you lose could be the difference between a heart attack, a stroke, and you living another 10 years. You don't you don't let you don't let your flesh tell you when you're going to obey God. Anything that's going to better your life, you know that's coming from God. You you know you know how many spouses will sit there and they, they can get an urge to do something nice, say something nice and they won't. They they can look at they a man will look at his wife, she is looking fabulous, he won't say a word. He'll feel the, like saying, wow, wow, you look nice or anything. Or she'll think about saying, you know, you're so handsome. You look nice tonight, blah, blah, blah. I love you in that suit. I love you. Won't say nothing. Anything that's good, harden not your heart. When it comes to your kids, sometimes you just want to say something positive. Build them up. Harden not your heart. Don't ever allow the devil to hinder what God is trying to do through you. It is going to be for your benefit. Do you hear what I'm saying? When God is trying to grow you, you need to know the devil is trying to hold you back. So when you say no weapon formed against me will prosper, you need to know that weapon is coming in the form of your flesh or someone else's flesh to hold you back. It ain't the devil ain't moving chairs and all that stuff. No, no, no. He, he going to get into you. He going to make you too lazy to get up and do what you're supposed to do. Every time I start praying, spending time with God, and I'm, at, I'm in my, my room. And um, when I'm in my room, man, I'm telling you something, man, I just start getting busy. Things got to be in order. Man, I start putting up stuff. I'm, I'm you know, making sure my, church, my shirts and my closets all turned the same way. And I'm just an in order person when I spend time with God. When Try spending time with God, and then whatever urge you have, to do, do that. Do that. You say, well, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to go clean my car. Well, you, you should have a clean car. No, you you sitting around there with pieces of lunch and all that stuff around in the car. The devil is a liar. Whatever God moves you to do, do it. However God want to bless you, let him bless you. However God want to increase, let him increase you. All right? You have to get to the place that I understand that if I'm going to grow, I need the Holy Spirit. I need God to position me that I can receive the best he has for me. Harden not your heart. The, the key for you knowing the Holy Spirit live on the inside of you is what you feel and what you hear about moving forward in things that are going to only help you and your family. You know, I'm telling you, man. That devil is there to disrupt your plan. You'll see, you'll see your spouse slaving in the kitchen 
and you'll get an inkling, man, I should go help. And then you said, no, nah, man, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't going to start nothing because then she'll be looking for it. Get your lazy butt up. Get your lazy behind up. Get in there and be sympathetic to what your wife is doing. She, you can't cook, but you sure enough can cut up something. You can peel something. Get in there. Sometimes it's just, sometimes God will have you just to be nice to somebody, anybody, your children. Could be, it could be, you know they're supposed to do the dishes, but something hits you to do, just do them. Just do them. I remember one time, uh, my oldest daughter, it was her turn to do dishes. And um, so she went to bed and did not do the dishes. So the right thing was to wake her butt up and make her come down and do the dishes. Well, I don't know if she was sleeping or not, but I screamed up. First off, I had the, the I did the whole kitchen. I did the dishes. I, I put up the dishes, all that stuff. I did it all. Put it in the dishwasher, whatever I did. And and I, I yelled upstairs. I said, Brandy, you didn't do these dishes? Get down here and do these dishes. She's mad. Face uh, looked like a blowfish. And uh, she come downstairs. The kitchen was spotless. Change her whole mindset, a whole whole way of thinking. Just, just sometimes just being doing nice things, kind things. It ain't got to always be for somebody outside of your house. Look inside the house. Husbands, look inside the house. Is there something I can do that will relieve my wife? Wives, look, look inside the house. What can I say or do that's going to help my husband? See, I'm not all for these going to church and trying to be a blessing to people at church and then the people at home. I tell people, you don't bring, you don't even make me no cake. I don't need you. I don't need you being nice to me. I tell people, you know, people, you know the pastor kids is either going to be loved or hated at church. I, I ain't got no problem when my kids were small. My kids don't need your love. Love your kid. Don't be snickling and grinning in my kid's face and then you're going to look at your child like you're a pit bull. My kids don't need that from you. All right? Love your own child. You sit up there treating the past the child better than you treat your own. You stupid. Wait, you're not stupid. You're not stupid. You, you think different than me. You think different than me. Love your love your 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 children. You, you know, we're talking to a man, and uh, he he didn't have, whatever was going on with his money. He had no money. He needed some car tires or something like that. So he said he asked his wife, you know, hey, do you have anything that can help me out? You know, blah blah blah. She said I ain't got no money. I ain't got no money. Blah blah blah. And then they was having some kind of something at the church, and she come up with fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars. He was steaming. He was hot. Man, listen, I told him you have a right to be hot. Yeah, well, you have a right. How how in God green earth you got $1,500 to give to somebody at church and you, you ain't got $500 to give your husband to get some tires or whatever he needed, a battery, whatever it was. The devil is a liar. Listen, this is what I love so much. One, my wife take good care of me. Second, I'm far from broke. So you don't never have to mistreat anybody in your home to do anything for me. You ain't coming up in here, especially if you're married. You ain't coming past I made you a cake. You ain't make me no cake. You didn't make me no cake. Take that right now. You take that cake back home. All right? Well, here's the thing. People are so quick to love people outside their house, but they won't love the people in their house. The people in your house are supposed to receive the best of you. However sweet you can be, the people in, and you got to fight your flesh that you will comply with that, that I'm not going to mistreat. I don't treat nobody on earth better than I treat my wife. No, not even my kids. And I love my kids. My kids are responsible for me staying married. I mean, not not like right now, but you know, I've had incidents where I would have left if it wasn't for my kids. That's just the truth. And I know some of y'all be talking like, like, oh my goodness, I never thought he'd be like them. That devil is a liar. I've, I've had plenty of time I want to get my little suitcase. <laughs> you have to understand that if you're going to advance, the people in my house get the best of me. My wife get the best of me. 
my wife, my wife, she you know she get she get allowance. She works, and her allowance is whatever she want to take out of her paycheck. That's that's just how her allowance is. Whatever she wants, all she got to do is just tell me what she's taking, so I won't be planning money for it, right? And uh, I I teach my wife money principles. Now my wife run three schools. In those three schools she run, I tell her, no, no, honey, you don't have a job. Go go to work and be a leader. <clears throat> go to work and teach somebody how to take your place. Go to work. What, what, why? Because I'm not going to be full of wisdom to better other people's life. And then my wife is in a good position and, and she not be the leader that she could be. Honey, you got to read something. Honey, when the last time you read it? I motivate her. I push her. I tell men all the time, I don't care how much money my wife ever makes, she'll always need me. My fingerprints will always be on her success. I will motivate her. I will push her. When she come home, tell me some stuff. Now, her boss name is whatever, Ed, Fred, Dead, whatever the boy name is. I don't know what name is. But she ain't, got, she ain't worried about him. I'm the one going to light her up. How could you do that? How, why, why wouldn't you why do that? John? Oh, yeah, man, I'm trying to come up with the best suggestions because what happens is, um, I, I don't know if y'all know this, when, when those companies come into a school to prepare their lunch, that whoever run that school, you're like self-employed. They give you a budget and they say, we're giving you $100 and by the end of the school year, you need to have this much money. So she got to make budgets. She got to do all these things. Well, if I can help, I'm going to help. Many times I'm sensitive to my wife and her not cooking. No, we ain't cooking. No, no, we, we're going to do something else. We're going to do something else. So I don't, I don't eat out a lot. You know, some people say, oh, I see you eating out all the time. I don't eat out. When my wife and I was dating every week, she don't date me like she used to. When we was dating every week, you know, we used to stop off. It'd be our time every night, every once a week we was dating, go on date night. But I don't eat out like that. But if I see my wife is overworked, I see she working long hours. No. Nah. And then the Holy Spirit dealt with me because I used to, when I'm home, man, I don't want to be home by myself. And now I, I got to push my wife, stay at home, finish your work, stay at work, finish what you got to do, blah, 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 all this other stuff. I want my wife to be a success. I want my wife to grow. I want my wife to be great. My children know I got their back. They know I got my, you know, I was, um, <laughs> I was talking to a gentleman, I was talking about my son had a baby and um, and he said to me, he said, well, you said, you know, it's nice to see, you know, you didn't uh, put your son out. It's nice to see that you still support. I said, no, no, you got the wrong house. That ain't even an option. That ain't no option here. And my son ain't going nowhere. My kids, oh, I tell my kids all the time, you will always have somewhere to live. You'll never, ever be homeless. Now, you do what you want with your kids. All right, my kids be 50 years old. I'm going to have a suite here for you. You will have a suite. Now, my mama taught me, still is in force. Grown folk don't live with grown folk. So that means you got to submit to my rules. But you'll always have a place to stay. You ain't getting out. You don't leave because you're 18. You don't leave because you're 21. No. No, you ain't got to go nowhere. But now living here don't mean you get a right to all the amenities. You ain't going to be borrowing my car. You ain't going to be doing all that. I may not be paying for your vacation, but you'll always have something to eat. You'll always have somewhere to live. Now, you put your child out if you want. You put them out. I, don't, I mean, they ain't nothing to do with me. They ain't coming here. So, I mean, that's fine. My kids will always have somewhere to live. I, I mean, well, every everything they're doing, that's a success. You know, my son, he's just blowing my mind. You know, he's not dependent on me like I thought he would. When it comes to his child. Yeah, boy, buying some stuff. He's spending that money. He's spending that money. Man, let me tell you something. Everybody in your house need to be better off because of you. Everybody in, in your house need to be better off because of you. You have to make sure that you are not the person that is just in the house, just existing. Be a blessing. If, if you... If, if you live separate from your parents, if you're blessed enough to still have your parents, learn how to be a blessing. Learn how to come home and, and buy groceries. Before my mom died, man, my mom used to, all she used to do with the circular is circle what she want. 
She would circle it, and that's it. Myself, my wife would go out and get it. That's all. That's all she had to do. Sir, you blessed to have your parents. Learn how to be a blessing. People need to need. People need their life need to be better because they you're in it. You're in it. Go out of your way sometime, and give some of you to the people in your family. And I tell you, everybody, if your mom is living, your dad is living, you you don't want to waste that time being just doing you don't do that don't do that take take some of that time for mom and your dad know you appreciate him and you love him don't allow no one to receive more outside of your home than the people in your home listen i love you i want you to win this friday i'm gonna be putting some videos out we're gonna be doing bridging the gap we want to know why young people are not in church why are they drawn to music and emotionalism you find them churches where people are passing out and fun, running around. Young people go there. A lot of music. Music is a big draw. But but they they don't. I don't mind you liking the praise. Don't mind you liking the music. But my thing is why why you go to sleep when it's time for the word. We need to make sure the church of tomorrow is connected to the word. All these other things is good. We we can have those. But when you take the word out of it, you have nothing. I love you. I want you to win. Be blessed. Sunday, every online member, you need to be liking and sharing and make sure people are listening because of you. Be blessed now.